Hey, it's Chris, the Dating Doc, and I am back. Today is 26th of June, 2019. I'm back, and what I mean by being back is back with these podcasts. You know, we do a lot of these one-minute videos for uh, mainly for Instagram and that we also upload on Facebook, but it's time to do a little bit of that grind, a little bit of a longer podcast. Uh, a lot of these are going to end up being imported on iTunes and other platforms, so be on the lookout for those. So, um... What's this podcast going to be about? Okay, so what we're going to talk about, a couple little things here. So number one, I'm going to explain the business side of it. A lot of folks ask me, hey, what does a date coaching do? Why do I need advice? Um, are you a matchmaker, et cetera, et cetera? So I'm going to go into that. The second topic we're going to go into is uh, how's life been for me? Uh, maybe you guys can relate to things going on and uh, at the same time provide some tips. And uh, number three... Number three, number three, is it's pretty important. I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, that phase where you're kind of in the middle of not wanting to date and also uh, you do want to meet someone. So um, I call it dating purgatory. I'll, I'll get into that. Um, if you hear that sound in the background, I got a little 40-pound Rhodesian Ridgeback. Her name's Michaela. And she's chomping, literally chomping at the bits to hear my podcast while she eats her bone. So, okay, let's get this going. So first things first on the business side. Okay, so first off, I've been in this business. I've been in the dating service industry for about nine years. I started uh, with a company called Synergy Dating, which it's still technically around. That's the LLC that the dating doc belongs to. So um, I'm walking Miami Beach. And back in 2010, and I noticed that people were starting to get hooked on their phones. This was around that time when you just started seeing the change from people still chatting it up during happy hour and out at the club because I was young back then, younger. And um, and then, then you started seeing people just stare at their smartphones. And I said, man, we got an issue here. So that's where I decided to start doing events for singles. And my first event was uh, November 4th. 2010, correct? Yeah, 2010. And uh, it was held at a place called Coco's in San Antonio. So now defunct place. I played salsa music at night. Um, and the proceeds went back to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And at the same time, a lot of singles ended up meeting. Some of those folks I'm still keeping contact with from my first event. I distinctly remember spilling a drink. Uh, during my first event. That's how nervous I was. Uh, fast forward, six months after that, we started doing matchmaking. And uh, then we transitioned over about two years ago to do date coaching. Why? Because I'll tell you what, matchmaking is not easy. Okay, some people got the worst expectation management. You got folks that are uneducated, don't even lift a finger to work out or to eat right. And here they are looking for, you know, the equivalent to a Channing Tatum or Beyonce or, you know, pick 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 a celebrity reference that, that is considered attractive, you know, so um, and educated. So now I've been doing date coaching and I, I really do enjoy it. Um, I meet clients normally like at a at a Starbucks. I've met people uh, while I'm walking the mall. I'll walk with them, provide advice, doing a two for one, you know, taking a uh, taking a walk. And at the same time, getting some good advice. Now, for me, it's not just a lot of what you see on, on, on Instagram, Facebook, and other social media, YouTube. You see a lot of conceptual advice. You see a lot of motivational stuff. And um, my clients get all the juicy things, you know, the technical advice, the flow chart on how to start a conversation, you know, instead of the hi or hello on an app. You reference her profile and you go from there. You know, you it's a competition out there, okay? If you're on apps, this illusion that you're the only person they're talking to, it's more than likely um, that's a fallacy. So there, there's a lot of uh, competition, and you have to be able to know exactly how to communicate to go from dating, online dating or digital dating or meeting at the bar, to that first date, to steady dating, and then long-term relationship, or if not, just, you know, something fun and short-term and, Enjoy the dating world. Um, so that's that. 
how do I make money off of this? Okay, so we have ebooks, we have t-shirts, and I meet clients one-on-one. I meet them through webcam if they're, if they're not um, local. Webcam meaning Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, et cetera, et cetera, Facebook. So um, that's my pitch. Okay, I'll start off with that first in case people are always wondering, man, what do you do? What's this whole date coaching thing? Now, the only last thing I'll leave you with is what makes me different is that since I held events, since I did matchmaking, and since I also have a huge business and military background, I see things a lot differently than um, I guess you can call competitors or others in my in my space uh, of dating coach services. Um, you know, I, I integrate things such as Six Sigma, uh, which if you're not familiar with that, it's a process improvement theory. So, you, you know, it's, you, you reduce waste. You know, if you know that your same process is attracting the wrong kind of person and you know that you go through this like mental process of saying, I am attracted to, for example, biceps or backside or the wrong kind of, you know, the bad boy or the bad girl. Um, seeing those yellow flags, seeing those red flags really help. So, um, but to be able to, to put that in a game plan and a lot of my clients listening, they know what I'm talking about. And I'll draw up a game plan. So, all right, ADD might've kicked in. So let's switch it up. Okay. So, uh, topic two, how's life been for me? Okay. So, uh, I'm also in the military and, uh, things have been a little bit busy. I, I I've been in, uh, Canada, um, Last month, I was actually in Canada supporting the largest Canadian military exercise. So uh, that was a lot of fun to check out Edmonton, uh, specifically Wainwright. I was two hours due, let me see, two hours west of Edmonton. Um, and then um, here in San Antonio, wear the uniform during the day, change out. My life consists of working on business, working on an online army module that I'm working on, and eating some almond chocolate ice cream. So holla if you like some almond chocolate ice cream. Um, dating world. Dating world's been interesting. I uh, had something going for a little bit, reacquainted with someone that I met through online dating. Things did not work out. I'm spilling my business, right? Uh, but, you know, I've also been going to, uh, to church a lot. And uh, this is not to dissuade any listeners who are spiritual, agnostic, uh, atheist. Um, I do enjoy the message. I do enjoy the absorption of energy that I get from fellowship. And, uh, and you know, the Bible is an advice book, just like texts from Buddhism and uh, the Quran. If interpreted well, any of those documents, any of those historical and religious scriptures, it's a great self-help book. And that's the way that I, I see uh, me getting back to uh, to my Christian roots is because it, it does center me, and I have to understand how I can also give back and uh, how I can follow my passion, which again is helping people. So um, I serve, and I serve while serving, be a military in business. Okay, so that's how life has been, um, which kind of segues into this purgatory. Of dating that, that I wanted to get into. So have you gone through that scenario where you're like, man, you're either horny, you want to, you want companionship, you want to just talk to someone, but you're so frustrated with dating, right? You're just so beat up and tired and frustrated of the F boys and the F girls. If you know what the F means, I guess it could mean failing, right? Um, let me tell you right now, first off, is I empathize with you. I understand how stressful and how disappointing that is when day in, day out, you try to make it work, you try to have hope, it doesn't work out, you go on a date, you go on a couple dates, you find out the person is not really into you or even into dating at all, and then you end up pulling back for that next person who was ready. And it's this weird paper, rock, scissors combined with bad traffic and root canal all mixed into one this purgatory of, of dating best thing i want to i want to explain is that if you don't try you'll get the same same result right just like if if you 
go to the gym, but you don't work out, you actually didn't do anything compared to the person who's doing push-ups in their living room. Okay, I, I, I want to repeat that again. Just because you show up to the gym, but you don't work out, you didn't really show up. Same thing with dating, right? You might be on the apps, but you're repeatedly just swiping or messaging or looking through pictures. You're not really showing up. And I think that's what's happening is that our hope and our enthusiasm for dating is greater than the actions behind it. Because there's a lot of hesitancy. Because we know that, oh man, um, dating sucks. Well, we know it does. But the reason it sucks, as you say, is it takes people for it to change. Right? It is the dating recession, dating purgatory. Yet we have so many ways of meeting someone. And if you show up, not only can you make that person's day, but they're going to want to see you. Right? So if you're going to this dating purgatory, you either go two ways, right? Whether you believe in purgatory or not. But purgatory basically means that you have, um, you're kind of at a standby for going to heaven or hell, if you want to use the analogy of religion. So either you don't fix yourself and you complain about dating and you stay in hell or you go to hell, <laughs> right? What I mean by that is you have resentment. You um, are no longer attracted to the notion of meeting someone or you go to heaven. You're resilient. You're positive. You ex inspire hope out of people when they show up on a date because again, and I've said this before, they have taken time out of the day to talk to you, to go see you, to make, to have a phone call with you. It takes energy to be witty, to be flirty. And they're devoting a lot of that time and energy. And so are you. And we don't value that as much, right? We don't value that as much. We have, we're, we're building this dating generation. And I'm going to say it right now, especially the millennials that are just chasing that high of instant gratification and validation and then off to the next person because of the electronics, because of the devices. So that's purgatory. That is still neutral. That's the middle road. You're not doing much. Start showing up. And guess what? Hey, you can still be a little she-devil and be in heaven when it comes to dating. Or, you know, the little bad boy who's also loyal and looking for a long term. I truly believe that. So um, these are more words of inspiration. But at the same time, it's a wake-up call in logic. It's pure logic if you think of it. All right? I use the gym analogy. If you show up but you don't work out, you really didn't do much. Same thing. Turn on the stove, but it's not heating. Did you really turn on the stove? Right? Same thing with dating. Hey, I'm out there. I'm searching. Are you really? Don't complain if on your profile you say, not looking for a hookup, just kind of seeing what's out there. When you're kind of seeing what's out there, you're kind of going to get a, maybe get a result back. Most of the time it's going to be half-assed or not as good of a, of a result. So um, ponder on that. If you're listening to this, think about your own life through a reflection. And even if you're in a relationship, think about how can I empower my partner and myself? How can I serve the dating world instead of just wanting to get from it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tie it up with that. And, uh, I want you to think about that a little bit, reflect on that. If you're interested, um, I have a new t-shirt design and I want to be able to circulate it with five people. If you're one of those five people, you get the t-shirt for free. All you have to do is tell me if you like the idea and uh, or any edits you want to make to it. So 
respond if you're on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook watching this. Uh, you can be one of those five. Give me feedback. Make this an awesome shirt and that people would want to get that inspired change in the dating world. So Chris, the dating doc here, I am signing off. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support and keep supporting a strong synergistic dating world. Thank you.